Welcome everyone, I am the Cowboy Drummer and today we are going to explore the mystical world of the gong symbol. We will embark on a journey to uncover its rich history, cultural significance, and the mesmerizing sounds it produces, aka I'm gonna smash this thing. Smash, smash, smash! The gong symbol, also known simply as the gong, holds a special place in many cultures around the world. Originating in East Asia, it's been used for centuries in ceremonies, rituals, and musical performances. AKA, people have been smashing these things for a long time. Smash! In Chinese culture, the gong is often associated with spiritual practices and is believed to possess healing properties, if you believe that kind of thing. It is a symbol, no pun intended, of power and enlightenment. Gong symbols come in a variety of sizes and designs, each producing its own unique sound, from the delicate whisper of a small gong to the thunderous roar of a large one. Like this 28 inch Pleisty gong we have today that I'm gonna smash the absolute f out of. Smash! The possibilities are endless. Whether used in orchestral compositions, meditation sessions, or modern music productions, the gong symbol continues to captivate audiences with its enchanting resonance and timeless sound. AKA, people love when you smash the f out of this thing. Man! The exact origin of the gong symbol is kind of uncertain. It does date back thousands of years though. That's right, I said thousands of years. How However, the earliest evidence of gongs being used dates back to ancient China around the 6th century BCE. These early gongs were likely made of bronze and were used in various religious and ceremonial contexts. Over time, gongs evolved and spread to other cultures and regions, each contributing to their development and significance. It's crazy to think that they could actually make gongs like this so long ago. The process of making them required skilled craftsmanship and careful attention to detail, resulting in instruments that were not only sonically rich but also also visually stunning. As mentioned before, ancient gongs were typically made using bronze, a metal alloy composed primarily of copper and tin. Metal workers would melt the bronze alloy in a furnace and pour it into molds of various shapes and sizes. These molds would often have intricate designs or patterns carved into them to create the desired aesthetic. I totally respect the idea of making these things as beautiful as possible just to smash the living fuck out of them. Smash! The molten bronze would cool and solidify inside the molds. After cooling, the newly formed gongs would be removed from the molds and inspected for any imperfections. After shaping, the gongs would be tuned to produce the desired pitch and tone. This was often achieved by carefully hammering the surface of the gong to adjust its thickness and tension. Pretty similar to how we do it now. Finally, the gongs would be decorated with ornate designs or inscriptions. These decorations often held symbolic or cultural significance and added to the aesthetic appeal of the instrument. Nowadays, we just slap a Peisty logo on that b and send it out the door. So now let's dive into the fascinating world of sound exploration with the gong symbol. One of the most intriguing aspects of the gong is its ability to produce a wide range of tones and textures. There are multiple different kinds of mallets used to strike a gong symbol, all of which I do not have, so I'll have to kind of just make one, or I can use my fist. But regardless, there are many different types of sounds we can get out of this thing, all depending on where you hit it and which instrument you use. You can set up the gong on a snare stand and position it like a ride cymbal, use a drumstick, and it kind of sounds like a ride cymbal. This is definitely not the traditional way to play a gong cymbal. Most of the time, you'll see it just being struck right in the middle or around the sides. Or sometimes it'll be tapped lightly around the sides until it produces a big sound. You can also use a mallet to just kind of slide it around the cymbal and that produces a completely different sound in itself. There's also this little rubber looking mallet thing that when you slide it across the surface of the cymbal, it makes me feel like I'm in a horror movie. It's really eerie sounding. I 
actually tried this with my rubber drumstick tips and it produced a very similar sound on my 28 inch gong. But that definitely depends on which kind of mallet you're using on the gong. Now let's just get to what we all have been waiting for. I'm gonna smash the f out of this thing. I was gonna try to build my own mallet, but then I realized I had this golf club, I have this rubber hammer, and then I found this glass bird that I was gonna try to just slide across and see if we can get that eerie sound. Maybe a wire brush, I don't know. We're gonna try to use multiple different things on this gong. But yeah, we're definitely smashing the f out of it. Today, today smash keep in mind this is only a 28 inch gong i know it's not a 60 or an 80 but we're still gonna try to do all those methods that we saw in the other videos i'm gonna record all of this with the yamaha e80 10 first and we're gonna tap it lightly around the sides to try to get that big wide open sound The golf club was clearly trashed. You're gonna die, clown! <laughs> the hammer definitely worked better. I'm excited to smash it with the hammer, that's for sure. Smash. But anyways, let's see if we can get that eerie sound by sliding some things across the surface. I have this glass bird, I have these wire brushes, and this metal L-rod, so let's try all those. Wow, that metal L-Rod produced the exact sound I was looking for. I'm kind of surprised. I thought the glass bird was going to do it, but that L-Rod definitely was like nails on a chalkboard, sounded like a horror movie. That was sick. Okay, guys, I think the only thing left to do is give it the old smash. smash. We're going to hit it right in the middle and towards the edge so we can hear the difference. And there you go, guys. I think the highlight of this whole thing was being able to get that eerie kind of sound by scratching the L-Rod across the surface. I wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to achieve that, and I definitely did. And that audio was not tampered with. It wasn't mixed. It was just raw EAD audio. So freaking cool. That's gonna conclude our gong smashing video. I hope you learned a little bit today about the gong and its history, and I hope you enjoyed watching me hit this thing and make as many different sounds as I could. It was fun, it was cool. If you like this video, give it a like and leave a comment. Please subscribe and follow me on all social medias at The Cowboy Drummer. I appreciate your guys' time. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.